Meta is coming out with some new safety tools to crack down on sextortion and unwanted explicit images. The social media giant, which owns Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp, will begin testing its new nudity filter on one of its platforms. CBC's Linda Ward is working on this story and she joins me now. So Linda, tell us about these new features. Yeah, so probably the most noticeable new feature that Instagram users will start seeing is something called nudity protection. And what what this is, is for under 18s, that nudity protection will be automatically turned on for adults. They will see a message encouraging them to turn it on. And this is what it looks like when you're trying to, to when, you're, when you're receiving a nude image. Those nude images will be blurred, as you can see there. Uh, you'll see a message urging people not to feel pressure to respond, an option to block the sender. When you're sending nude images, you'll see a message that looks something like this. Uh, there'll be a reminder in there to be cautious and uh, say, maybe you don't want to do this. Maybe uh, you want to unsend uh, this photo if you've changed your mind. If you're forwarding something that someone else has sent you that is a nude image, you'll see a message encouraging uh, the sender to reconsider before sending that image. These new changes will also flag and block interactions with users who are uh, mm -hmm. engaged or suspected of being engaged in sex torsion. And this is when uh, people will go online asking uh, people, usually teenagers, to send nude images of themselves and then say that they'll post them online if they don't pay up. Meta and other uh, social media networks have been engaged in lawsuits, many saying that this has caused harm, even uh, causing uh, people to commit suicide. Instagram says that these new features should get ahead of that and they will be available soon worldwide. I know we've covered some of those sextortion cases and they are truly devastating. So it seems like a series of warnings are coming up, asking people to rethink what they're doing. What are child safety advocates saying about these new tools? Yeah, so they're saying that this is essentially a good first step, that it's uh, one thing that they can do. John Sheehan, senior vice president with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children in a statement calls it encouraging, saying we're hopeful these new measures will increase reporting by minors and curb the circulation of online child exploitation. Dr. Samir Hinduja with the Cyberbullying Research Center applauding the move, saying it will reduce unwanted exposure to potentially traumatic images and gently introduce cognitive dissonance, dissonance to those who may be open to sharing nudes. But others are saying, you know, this doesn't go far enough. There needs to be more support for people who have become engaged in these sextortion schemes. Meta says they're doing what they can to work with other tech companies in a tech coalition uh, called um, Lantern that's sharing intelligence across social media platforms because we know teenagers use more than one platform and we know that those who are preying on them do as well. I know parents are truly listening up on this story. Thanks for this, Linda. The CBC's Linda Ward. Well, for more on this, we've reached Caitlin Mendez. She's an associate professor of sociology at Western University and Canada Research Chair in Inequality and Gender. We've reached her in London, Ontario. Caitlin, thank you for taking the time. I want to begin with what we heard from Linda, social media giant Meta, testing AI-driven nudity protection tool designed to identify and blur these images containing nudity that are sent to minors through the app's messaging systems. What do you make? Can this work? I totally agree. I think it's a really great first step, uh, but I think we shouldn't just kind of stop it and hold off and thinking that this is going to solve all of the problems. Some of this new you know, detection has also been around for some time. Um, now, it hasn't necessarily kind of notified users, and I think that is really important. The research that I do with my team, uh, DIY Digital Safety, we're going around Canada talking to teens, and we absolutely hear from teen girls that they get bombarded by um, unwanted nude images from older men. Young boys are also often targeted, often by porn bots and some of these sextortion scams. So I do think that this filter will 
will at least stop them from seeing those images. Hopefully it makes it easier for them to block and report other accounts. And I'm really hoping that Meta actually takes these blocking reports seriously because that's been a really key complaint is that young people tell us about how they report these accounts, but they're not removed, they're not stopped, they just continue to bombard or people can very easily create these new accounts. So. From what I'm seeing, these measures aren't necessarily stopping these kind of bad actors from creating multiple accounts and bombarding young people with these kinds of images. Caitlin, as I understand it, this tool, which Meta says is turned on by default for anyone under 18 and encouraged for adults as well, as we saw, it reminds users to be cautious. It gives them also the ability to unsend a photo if they change their mind. Do you think that's helpful? Is, is that a push in the right direction? 100% the setting, the privacy settings to the strictest by default is really important. And this is something that a lot of um, you know researchers and groups that work with children around child safety are really advocating for, that this should be the default. That's really important. The idea that users can change their mind, that is also important, but that's also not necessarily anything new. And it's very clear on Meta's website that they say, you know, you can unsend something. But there's actually no way of knowing whether it's been seen or downloaded or screenshot. And there are other platforms like Snapchat, for example, that can let you know if someone has taken a screenshot of those images. Of course, there are ways to bypass that. So um, things like Snapchat, where it you know, it'll tell you if someone has screenshotted or downloaded it, but there are other ways of doing it that doesn't alert the user, but that can be really important. So if you do want to unsend something, maybe you can kind of have a sense of, has it gotten out there? How far has it gotten out? And one of the things I found really encouraging about this is that if you are forwarding a new image that you receive, a message and a notification comes up that suggests that you know this may violate community standards. It can be illegal in many provinces around Canada and actually even um, all across Canada. Sharing intimate images without consent is against the law. And also it violates privacy. It violates bodily autonomy. It violates dignity. And these are important messages that I think we really need to communicate to the broader public as well. Caitlin, should the responsibility of safeguarding children and minors fall on social media companies? They 100% have a really important role to take, but I think we can't just rely on them to be doing the right thing. So I, I'm really encouraged by things like the online harms bill because it proposes having an ombudsman that sits above the social media companies and can actually sanction them and it can mandate them to, to do certain things. Um, it also holds them accountable. So right now, great, we've got medicine, they're introducing these measures. They're going to be collecting data where they're going to assess whether they're successful or effective or not, but they, they have no obligation to release that data. If we do have this online harms bill passed, one of the options is making it possible or mandatory for these social media companies to share the data that they collect with researchers so that we don't just have companies like Meta saying, aren't we doing such a great job with no oversight or no one kind of verifying whether that data um, is real or is actually having the intended benefits. So we definitely need more. I do think the government needs to step in. And I think for this to be effective, it can't just be Meta introducing this because um, you know, there's other platforms like Snapchat and Wiz are actually the places that organizations like CyberTip, which collects a lot of this data, those are the platforms that they're saying where a lot of this sextortion is actually happening. So I'd also be curious for Meta to find out, you know, how big is this issue on the platform compared to other issues? Caitlin, can I just ask you for parents? It sounds like a lot of what you've seen there, some of what we've seen before, you're hoping the online bill, uh, online harms bill will do its part. What's your advice to parents? I would definitely say it's really important to try to talk to your kids in non-judgmental ways. Let's avoid telling them things like if you do send an intimate image to someone um, that does get shared without consent, or if you find yourself kind of the victim of one of these extortion scams, let's stop telling young people that their lives are over, that these images are out there forever, because they're not. There are ways of getting these images taken down. And we think that some of those harmful messages are what's actually driving some young people to die by suicide or um, self-harm in many other ways because they think, gosh, I've made this mistake, I've done this one thing, and it's going to ruin the rest of my life. So that's like a really key thing is, is, is stopping that and also making sure young people know where to go for support. So in Canada, we have Project Arachnid, which is a place to get these intimate images taken down from the website. There's great helplines like um, Kids Help Phone Line where young people can go and call for anonymous support because a lot of young people don't want to talk to their parents. They don't feel safe 
talking to their parents. So making sure they know other places they can go for support is really important. Caitlin, that's great information. Caitlin Mendez in London, Ontario. Thank you. Thank you.